it's really rewarding to uh, take a piece of wood uh, in the raw form and uh, at the end of it, it uh, is actually an instrument that uh, someone can play on for uh, hundreds of years if they want. <laughs> Hello, I'm Waylon Thomas. I'm an amateur violin maker in Fairhope, Alabama. I started making fiddles just because I wanted one. And it's led to an addiction, basically, that where I can't stop making them. I'm on number 12 now. This is number seven that I'm holding right here. But again, I'm an amateur violin maker. I have no formal training. I just have a desire to try to make the best violin that I possibly can. So the first thing I do is I make a drawing where I can um, draw out the mold where I put the uh, C blocks on here and the uh, top block and the, the bottom block or the end blocks. This obviously is where the neck is going to get cut in and then the C belts here. Here I have uh, the strips of maple that uh, I will thin down to a little over a millimeter and a half thick and I'll get them real nice and smooth and uh, then I'll use a, uh, a steam bender. Then I'll take them and wet them in, in water. Of course, I'll cut them to length, an approximate length of the sea bouts. Always make the sea bouts first. We'll get them nice and wet, and uh, we'll make sure this is up to a, a boiling point where you actually will drop water on it, and then it will pop where it's really hot. Then you'll take this, and you'll bend this to shape. And you want the shape to bend exactly where it fits in this sea bout where it's a perfect fit. These are just rough cut now, but as I get down to it, they'll be just right. And then as we uh, bend the sea bouts in there, we'll let them glue. We use animal hide glue to do that. Then we'll let it set for a good 24 hours. And then we'll trim it off. And then we'll take the ribs and we'll start doing the, uh, the bottom bout here, or the lower bout. Then we'll do the upper bout. We'll clamp them on there and we'll let them glue. And once that's done, we'll trim them off. As you uh, take the garland now that it's shaped, these are on here to hold its shape. Then we take these and we put them on the uh, maple back. And we also will trace out, when we turn it over this way, we'll trace out the uh, spruce belly. Once we get those traced out, then we can take them out to the bandsaw, which is the only time I use a bandsaw, is to actually do the rough cuts on the plates, whether it be the back plate or the top plate. Now what I've done is temporarily glued them onto the garland and uh, what we'll do now is make sure that the shape of the violin is going to be the same on both the, uh, the uh, top plate here and also on the bottom plate here. So, But the next step after getting its shape will be to take it apart, put the linings on the inside of the garland and put the purfling on the outside of both the back and the top. And then after that, then we'll go on through the rest of the process. We'll uh, put in the F holes, and uh, then we'll put in the uh, base bar, and uh, then we'll put it back together for real, this time once and for all with uh, animal high glue, and get it set up, and then it'll start looking like a violin. Then we'll, uh, we'll finish the scroll. We'll finish cutting it all out. And then uh, you'll notice the two little holes here. These are reference uh, points that uh, when I take the top off, we'll carve in the, uh, the neck. After that, we'll, we'll finish the violin up and then it'll sing. Mm -hmm. 